What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here today for something a little bit different. We're going to talk about Spider-Man Metal, and I know, I know, for the non-Marvel card people in the room, you might want to stick around for this one, because I think it's, I personally think it's interesting. You all can tell me in the comments down below. We are going to break down my ROI on Spider-Man Metal. I opened five hobby boxes, six blasters, and had some CGC grading fees. We're going to tally all that up. It's already tallied up on the screen in front of you. I kept track of everything that I sold, both raw and graded. The twist here is we are going to break down all the videos that I did as well. Not like in depth, just at a high level. How many views I got, how many subscribers I gained, and how much YouTube revenue I made from that. Total that up and see how we did. So, like, comment, subscribe. Hope this is interesting for you. This is a little peek behind the scenes, both of from a transparency perspective of, hey, everyone's freaking out, you know, has been freaking out rather about Spider-Man Metal. It's sold out on EPAC now. How good or bad are these boxes? This is my sample size. Everyone runs out and shows, here's the 10K green PMG that I hit. But in reality, most boxes aren't going to be like that. And then with a little extra added level of, yes, I am a content creator. Yes, I make revenue from posting videos. Kind of give you a peek behind the scenes on how that breaks down on some of this stuff. So out the get, I had five hobby boxes. They ran me $950. This is the key of this entire, one of the keys of this entire video. I pre-ordered my boxes extremely early. My cost basis on boxes were $190 a piece. I could have basically sold them right now today for probably about 3 k before fees. So keep that in mind. Right now, boxes run about 600 bucks. At the time boxes got in hand, I think they were retailing for about five, 550 maybe a little bit more than that. I don't remember the specific numbers. That played a big role on whether I was profitable or not. We'll get to the bottom line number here in a couple of minutes. I also purchased and ripped six blaster boxes on the channel. Those were ones that I ran into at Target the day that they released. Happened to get them, ran home, made a quick video. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. I also had $300 in CGC grading fees. I sent off that 25 card bulk order. That $300 in grading fees is only my Spider-Man metal stuff. I subtracted out the non-Spider-Man metal stuff. My red Ghost Spider PMG that I bought and graded is not included in this because that was a single that I bought separately. I wanted to keep this strictly to the sealed wax. So that was a $1,440 that I spent in hobby boxes, five hobby boxes, six blasters, and CGC grading fees. That's this numbers right here. Whoops. This column, we are not gonna go through this line by line. This is everything that I sold singles wise, including graded cards. Now, some of my stuff, I moved pretty quickly. You wouldn't be able to get these prices today. For example, my Carnage Retro that I pulled on like the first day the set came out, I got 350 for that. This, these numbers are after selling fees and shipping costs. I sold that for 400 bucks on eBay. I netted out 350 out of it. Some of the graded stuff I did pretty okay on. You figure my cost basis was the wax that I ripped, the grading fees, 15 bucks. I did not sell any graded card for less than $15. Uh, I did a bulk deal with a local dealer that I know for eight of the CGC nines. I got 200 bucks for those. He flipped those and made profit on his end on those. Some of the other graded stuff really varied. Uh, the Hobgoblin Yellow 9.5, I only got 30 bucks for. The Black Panther, I got 105. Uh, the Black Widow, I believe I got like 100 for. I don't remember where that is on the list, uh, but that's around here somewhere. The uh, Iron Man Yellow FX, I got 95 for. Venom, I got 85 for. So this stuff's kind of all over the... Oh, here's the Black Widow up here, 85 after grading fees. 
So I did pretty good on that, which boosted my value as well. Now, my hits, my numbered hits were terrible. Uh, you could see them up here. Scarlet Spider Pink, 85 bucks. Winter Soldier Pink, $22. White Tiger Red PMG, $86. J. Jonah Jameson Turquoise, $42. And a Kangaroo Orange for $42. Those were my big box hit numbered cards. I whiffed completely. Completely. My best single card sale ungraded was the Carnage Retro for $350. And the Carnage Bronze uh, Aluminum out of 99 for 135 Other than that, grading really kicked a lot of this stuff up. My total sales were $2,033. So just now, well, uh, I should note, one of my other best hits I still have. That is the Venom comic cut that I pulled. Full face image of Venom, really cool comic cut. I have that listed for sale on eBay. It's extremely high. I, I don't think it's near that number, but I just put it up there just to kind of see what would happen. I have had cash offers for that card of $300 that I turned down. Uh, for the time being, I'm just willing to sit on it. It's just a cool looking comic cut. I kind of like it. It's kind of grown on me. If I move it, I move it. If not, it's perfectly fine. I'm, I'm perfectly happy to keep it. I know that I can move it for 300 bucks pretty much any time that I want. So I still have that card that is not factored in on this. So just selling stuff. Other than that, I pretty much moved everything else from Spider-Man Metal. Uh, I still have like some really cheap low-end inserts, like five bucks, a buck here. Uh, I still have a stack of all, a bunch of raw cards, high series, low series. I did sell all that I didn't want to keep, all my yellows, grandiosas, golds. You can see these lots down here. I sold a gold lot for $15. I sold a yellow lot for $32. And I sold a grandiose lot for like 20 bucks. That all came out to a little over $2,000. So that right there, I was profitable by 600 bucks, not quite 600 bucks, just selling my singles. Once again, key thing to keep in mind, my boxes only cost me $950. Imagine if I paid $600 a box and my box cost me an extra two grand on top of that. Now your cost basis goes up to, what would that be, like $3,500? I am way in the red. Way in the red. So keep that in mind when you see all these boxes being ripped, all these cool hits, this, that, and the other thing, especially at current market prices. If I paid current market prices, I'd be down almost $1,500 on this order. That was with leveraging grading. Now, I could sort through, maybe there's more stuff I could grade out of there. I kind of went through, I mean, we all know the quality on these cards. It's not spectacular. I pulled out all the key characters that I thought were pretty decent shape and sent them off. And I barely got to 25 cards. In fact, I had to throw in some non-Spider-Man metal stuff to get to 25 cards. So keep that in mind. If I paid full price for these boxes, I got smoked. Now, let's talk about the YouTube side of things. This is the part that I don't know that a lot of people kind of let you look behind the curtain on. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight videos strictly out of opening and grading Spider-Man Metal. I did not include any like market talk videos or I did like a FOMO video about Spider-Man Metal. I kind of probably could have included that. I didn't for the purposes of this. This is just box openings, a live stream, and some submission previews and reveals. So let's kind of run through these really quickly. First box opening. This is the day the product came out. I ripped one box right off the get and I got that video uploaded as quickly as I possibly could. Now, this video is an outlier for me. This video got almost 20, it'll be 23,000 views probably by the time you're seeing this, but right at time of recording, which uh, for four, full clarity, I am recording this on October 3rd in the evening. So these views will obviously creep up from here, but honestly, most of these videos now get a couple views a day, five to 10 views a day, maybe, if that. First box opening, 23,000 views will just round up. That is an extreme outlier for me. Most of my videos 
get about two to 4,000 views depending on the topic. That's typically what most of my content gets. This video started out like that. It was a normal video. It went up, it did its couple thousand views, and then it started to tail off like it normally does. And then it just took off. And then it was just kind of constantly doing a decent amount of views per day. It went on for that for about 10 to 12 days where it was doing maybe a thousand views a day. Extremely rare. Uh, I don't remember how many videos I have over 20,000 views, but it's not many. I think it might be three or four in the history of the channel. And I've uploaded over 800 videos uh, at this point. In fact, I just looked. I have four videos over 20,000 views, and one of those is a short, which is a completely different thing. So really, I have three actual full-length videos over 20,000 views. My number one overall video is that first video, Marvel video that I did on 90MU way back in February 2021. That's at 40,000 views. The video I did on retail hunting back in 2020 is at 35,000 views. And now this video at 23,000 views, basically. After that, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but well, actually not even that many, uh, about another six or so videos between 10 and 15,000. And then everything kind of gets lumped up uh, once you get under 10,000. So this is an extreme outlier for me. So what is a video that gets 23,000 views get you? In this case, it got me 137 new subscribers, which I don't even know if any of those, some of those people could have unsubscribed already, and $165 in Google AdSense revenue. So a 23,000 view video netted me out 165 bucks. And YouTube ad revenue is a whole other, people have whole channels devoted to figuring out YouTube ad revenue. It varies from video to video, day to day. It is always a fluctuating beast. It is never the same. You get a general over idea. It'll usually float within a certain margin, but it really varies depending on the topic title, what the channel is. It could vary by niche, tons of stuff. I don't want to get into the weeds on that. I did a live stream where I opened two boxes. I had Justin uh, and Scandell on and a couple other people I think popped in on that. That got 2,200 views. I gained seven new subscribers it made $24 in YouTube revenue. The key thing that happened in this, and this is part of this is like a little YouTube content 101. That was the video where Scandell pulled four PMGs in one box, three in one pack. The next day I went in and clipped out that three minute segment, four minute segment, whatever it was, repackaged it, reposted it as another video. And with a fancy thumbnail, oh my God, look what happened. That video got 8,300 views, 31 new subscribers, $41 in revenue. Blaster box opening. I, was, I think I was the first person to get a blaster box opening up. I got extremely lucky finding it in my local Target, ran home, recorded a video. 8,000 views, I'm sorry, 10,000 views, 52 new subscribers, $86 in revenue on that one. So that was six blaster boxes, cost me 190 bucks. I made $86 back in YouTube revenue. That video, kind of an outlier. 10K views for a single video is pretty strong for me. I opened my fourth box, 3.6K views, 11 new subscribers, $32 in revenue. So $190 box for me, $600 retail box at the time, I made $32 back in YouTube revenue on that. Did a CGC submission, did a video on that. 1.8K views, 16 bucks in YouTube revenue. Opened my fifth and final box, 2.7K views, $23 in YouTube revenue. And then I had this CGC return video, 3.1K views, $41 in revenue from that video. Grand total at time of recording, a little over 54,000 views, 247 subscribers, $428 in AdSense across all those videos. The subscriber number, it, <laughs> subscribers are weird. We all say like, comment, and subscribe. You don't make any revenue. Your revenue does not change based off the number of subscribers you have. It's all view-based and niche-based. Uh, I just put that in there as an extra thing. The subscribers matter more on like... Uh, 
I don't want to say like a clout perspective, but it, it, it kind of matters from that perspective. Like if you're talking to uh, an, an advertiser or something like that, not that I have a ton of sponsored content on the channel, but things like that, they look at stuff like that. But I thought it would be interesting to just kind of see how many I brought in. Um, so that's where we're at. 54,000 views, 200, basically 250 new subscribers and $428 in revenue. When I add that in, plus what I made from selling the cards, it puts us at about $24.75, which I played fast and loose with the numbers here, essentially a 1K profit off my initial $1,440 spent. So on that, with what I sold, plus content, I made 1K profit. Once again, keep in mind, I paid full price for the boxes, or I was buying at current market prices, five to $600 a box, I'd still be down. Probably anywhere from 300 to $800, depending on my cost of entry point on the boxes. So even with all that, I ripped it, sold some of the stuff, graded some of the stuff, made videos on some of the stuff. I was profitable because I got into the boxes super cheap. I pre-ordering, I pre-ordered in 2020, September, 2020. I think I pre-ordered. If I would have paid current market prices, even with all that stuff I put into it, I would have lost anywhere from three to 800 bucks. And keep in mind, each one of the, like this video, this CGC sub video probably took me, I'd say probably about an hour all told. Most videos usually take me about 45 minutes to an hour to record, edit, upload, thumbnail, fill in all the YouTube nonsense. So essentially on that video, I made 16 bucks for like an hour's worth of work, air quotes work. So I hope this was kind of interesting to you. Once again, kind of a full breakdown, kind of gives you a peek behind the scenes on the YouTube side. Also gives you a peek behind the scenes on what your entry point on this stuff is because this what i laid out right here in my opinion is a very realistic scenario if you open really any boxes but in this case specifically some spider-man metal stuff my boxes weren't loaded i didn't have any super crazy hits this is kind of the downside of spider-man metal in regards to ripping wax and trying to flip stuff to make a profit on it I probably made an entire base set out of it. So I have that, uh, which is kind of what I wanted was a base set out of it. Now, yeah, I could have just went out and bought a base set. But I obviously got, as a content creator, I got a bunch of content on it. And once again, kind of interesting to keep in mind, you know, how much do we make? Oh, you guys get to rip all your wax for free. Sure, maybe. Uh, I mean, not really. Once again, this video here is a complete outlier like this fourth box opening right here is completely normal. So retail wise, a five to $600 box, 3,600 views per that's right in line. This is, this is a perfectly average video for me. I made 32 bucks on it. Just kind of keep that in mind when you're, when you're looking at this stuff and going, Oh, the YouTube content creators get to rip all their stuff for free. At least the channel, my size, that is not the case. It's yes, it is content for a video. There's you know tax write-offs that there's there's a whole bunch of other side benefits to it. One hundred percent. Do not get me wrong. This is not me complaining at all. The fact that I even make any money at all ripping wax, even if it's ten or twenty bucks, because someone watches a video that I post. I am extremely lucky and blessed, and it took a lot of hard work to get to this point. Yeah, there's a channel's a lot bigger that probably actually can break even potentially opening a box. But I hope this kind of puts some things in perspective. And once again, the big takeaway that I want you to take from this is Spider-Man Metal can be a fickle beast. Any wax can be a fickle beast. This was a five box sample size plus six blaster boxes plus grading. And I turned a pretty nice profit. A 1K profit is nothing to sneeze at. But once again, if I paid full price for these boxes or current market rates for these boxes, I'm down three to five hundred, three to eight hundred dollars after all this. Hope this was interesting for you. Maybe I'll do more stuff like this in a future. I just got a 35 card PSA order back. Maybe we'll break something like that down as well. Uh, like this. Just got to remember to keep track of everything. So 
Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below if you thought that this was cool and interesting. Catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.